The 2007 Tampa Bay Buccaneers season was the franchise's 32nd season and the National Football League the 10th playing their home games at Raymond James Stadium, and the 6th under head coach John Gruden. On December 16, 2007, they clinched the NFC South Division title, and returned to the playoffs after missing it in 2006. However, they were defeated 24-14 in the wildcard round by the eventual Super Bowl champion New York Giants. The wildcard game was John Gruden's final playoff appearance as head coach of the Buccaneers before being dismissed at the conclusion of the next season. This would be the last season the Buccaneers qualified for the playoffs until 2020, and the last season the Buccaneers won their division until 2021. On December 16, in a game against the Atlanta Falcons, Michael Spurlock scored the first kickoff return touchdown in franchise history. Snapping a streak of 32 seasons, 497 games, 139 individuals, and 1,864 unsuccessful attempts. The play earned Spurlock the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week award. The 2007 offseason proved to be productive for the Buccaneers. General Manager Bruce Allen and head coach John Gruden had approximately $24 million U.S. million in salary cap space with which to maneuver during free agency. They made a splash on the first day of free agency by signing two quarterbacks, unrestricted free agent Jeff Garcia and Jake Plummer in a trade for a conditional pick in the 2008 draft. Controversy soon followed as Plummer announced his retirement on the same day, citing his health and his lack of a desire to compete for a job and learn a new system. However, he did not complete his retirement paperwork with the league. Many believe that Plummer was simply trying to retire so that he could later unretire and play for the Texans. They are led by his former coach Gary Kubiak, under whom Plummer played his best three years of football. The league reviewed the trade to make sure that Plummer had not retired before the trade, but he had not and his rights officially belonged to the Buccaneers. Other free agent losses and signings are as follows. Signings Cato June's first regular season interception for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers came on September 16, 2007. Losses re-signings after brief stays on the open market, the Buccaneers resigned CB's Philip Buchanan and Tory Cox, the latter known as a special team standout. They also resigned fan favorite Mike Alstott to a one-year contract, but ultimately lost him to injured reserve after a neck injury during the preseason. The 2007 NFL Draft took place in Radio City Music Hall on April 28-29, 2007. The Buccaneers were either to pick third or fourth in the draft, to be determined by a coin flip with the Cleveland Browns because the two teams had identical records and strength of schedule. Buccaneers GM Bruce Allen called heads and then the coin landed tails. For the first round, the Buccaneers picked fourth. The two teams alternated picking third and fourth in each round. In addition to their given picks, Tampa Bay also holds the Colts' second-round pick, the 64th pick overall. But also lost a sixth-round pick in a trade for tight end Doug Jolly formerly of the New York Jets. They also received two compensatory picks, awarded for losses during free agency. During the draft, the Buccaneers swapped fourth-rounders with the Minnesota Vikings in exchange for their pick in the sixth round. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers held training camp at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex from July 26 through August 16. They played four preseason games. Notes at Quest Field, Seattle The Buccaneers began their 2007 campaign on the road against their fellow 1976 expansion mate, the Seattle Seahawks. In the first quarter, kicker Matt Bryant provided two field goals for Tampa Bay to begin the game. In the second quarter, the Seahawks took the lead with kicker Josh Brown's 28-yard field goal, while Airbay Sean Alexander got a one-yard TD run. During a scoreless third quarter, injury sidelined Tampa Bay running back Cadillac Williams and quarterback Jeff Garcia. Garcia, however, returned to the game. Seattle wrapped up the win with Brown's 46-yard field goal, while QB Matt Hasselbeck completed a 34-yard TD pass to Airbay Maurice Morris. With a loss, the Buccaneers began their season at 0-1, their third opening day defeat in the past four seasons. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida the Buccaneers played their home opener against the 2006 NFC South champion New Orleans Saints. After scoring only six points the week before, the Buccaneers dominated the Saints, on offense and defense, at one point taking a 28-0 lead. Early in the first quarter, Barrett Rood recovered a Deuce McAllister fumble, which set up a Tampa Bay scoring drive. Carnell Williams, who was back in the lineup after injuring his ribs the week before, capped off the drive with a one-yard touchdown run. Early in the second quarter, Joey Galloway scored on a 69-yard catch and run from quarterback Jeff Garcia. Inside the two-minute warning, 
Garcia and Galloway scored again, this time with a 24-yard touchdown, to take a 21-0 halftime lead. Halfway through the third quarter, Cato June intercepted a pass from Drew Brees. Two plays later, Garcia and Galloway connected for yet another big play, a 41-yard completion to the New Orleans 9-yard line. Williams capped off the drive with his second 1-yard touchdown. New Orleans' first score came with a 1-yard touchdown run by Mike Carney, aided by a 58-yard catch by Philip Buchanan moments earlier. The Buccaneers improved to 1-1, into a tie for the NFC South lead. New Orleans fell to 0-2. Following the game, with 16 tackles and two forced fumbles, middle linebacker Barrett Rood was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week on Wednesday, September 19. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida the Buccaneers and Street. Louis Rams renewed a rivalry that was popular from 1999 to 2004. The early part of the game was a field position battle, with Rams running back Steven Jackson rushing effectively in the first half. All of Street. Louis' first half drives, however, came up empty on the scoreboard. Tampa Bay's first quarter drivers were also scoreless, with kicker Matt Bryant missing a 54-yard field goal short after slipping in the damp grass. Just before the two-minute warning, Rams kicker Jeff Wilkins missed a 42-yard field goal, setting up Tampa Bay's first score. After driving to the 17-yard line, a heavy downpour drenched the stadium. Matt Bryant connected on 27-yard field goal for the game's first points and concluded the first half. Tampa Bay received the second half kickoff, and rolled into the end zone with a 7-yard touchdown run by Carnell Williams. Street. Louis drove to the Tampa Bay 10-yard line, aided by two uncharacteristic defensive penalties by Derek Brooks and Ron Barber. The threat was moot, however, as Philip Buchanan intercepted Mark Bulger in the end zone. In the fourth quarter, Carnell Williams, aggravated his sore ribs and fumbled the ball while Oshio Mago Otagwe recovered for street. Louis. The Rams finally got on the scoreboard with a 25-yard field goal, narrowing the lead to 10-3 with 12 minutes to play. Backup running back Ernest Graham took over for Williams, and iced the game with two rushing touchdowns, the first of his career outside of the preseason. At Bank of America Stadium, Charlotte, North Carolina the Buccaneers and Panthers met for the first time this season, with first place in the NFC South on the line. Carolina starting quarterback Jake DeLome sat out the game with an elbow injury, and was replaced by David Carr. The Buccaneer offense started the game with an exhausting, 11-play, 71-yard drive, capped off by a three-yard scramble by Jeff Garcia for a touchdown. With three minutes left in the first quarter, running back Carnell Williams blasted down the field for an 18-yard run, but his right leg buckled, seriously injuring his knee. As he was being carted off the field, nearly the entire Buccaneers team, along with several Panthers players, huddled around Williams in support. After the injury timeout, Ernest Graham salvaged the drive with a one-yard touchdown run. Tampa Bay extended their halftime lead to 17-0 after a Matt Bryant field goal, meanwhile, Carolina's offense was sputtering, blasted by the Buccaneers' defense, who sacked Carr three times, and intercepted him once. Carr completed only 19 of 41 pass attempts, and Carolina was facing their first shutout in five seasons. With 23 seconds left in regulation, Carolina finally got on the board with a touchdown pass to D'Angelo Williams. An onside kick was unsuccessful, and the Buccaneers won their third straight game. Through four games, the Buccaneers had not given up any points in the first quarter, and quarterback Jeff Garcia had not thrown an interception. After the game, the Buccaneers announced that running back Carnell Williams and left tackle Luke Pettigout would both face season-ending surgery. On Wednesday, October 3rd, Linebacker Barrett Rood was named the NFC Defensive Player of Month for September with a league-leading 51 tackles, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and one interception. At RCA Dome, Indianapolis, Indiana the Buccaneers faced former head coach Tony Dungy for the second time. The previous meeting between the two teams in 2003 saw the Colts erase a 21-point deficit in the final four minutes to win the game in overtime. Both teams entered the game with players sidelined by injuries. Marvin Harrison and Joseph Adai sat out for Indianapolis, while Carnell Williams and Luke Pettigout were placed on injured reserve for Tampa Bay. The Colts controlled the tempo of most of the game, with a time of possession of over 38 minutes and 400 yards of offense. The Buccaneers were held to only 177 total yards and only 17 yards rushing. The first three Buccaneers' possessions were three and outs. Meanwhile, Indianapolis pulled out to a 13-0 lead. In the second quarter, Tenard Jackson intercepted Peyton Manning and set up the Buccaneers' first scoring drive. 
During the drive, running back Michael Pittman left the game with an injured ankle. Two plays later Tampa Bay got on the board with a Jeff Garcia touchdown pass to Alex Smith, and narrowed the score to 13-7. In the second half, Indianapolis continued to dominate both sides of the ball, and stretched their lead to 30-7. Garcia and Smith connected for a second touchdown pass with just over nine minutes left in the fourth quarter, and made the score 30-14. Hoping to spark a comeback, Tampa Bay attempted a surprise onside kick, but it was called back by a penalty. Indianapolis then took the re-kick, and put three more points on the board with an Adam Vinatieri field goal. Bruce Gradkowski took over as quarterback for Tampa Bay, and subsequently threw an interception to seal the victory for the Colts. The following day, on Monday October 8, the Buccaneers announced that Michael Pittman would miss six to eight weeks with a cracked fibula. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida the Buccaneers hosted the Titans at Raymond James Stadium, their second inter-conference matchup in two weeks. Buccaneers running back Ernest Graham was a part of the starting lineup for the first time in his career, replacing the injured Michael Pittman, who set out the game. The first half was a defensive struggle, with neither team scoring in the first quarter. Early in the second quarter, Tennessee drove to the Buccaneers' 32-yard line, but quarterback Vince Young fumbled the ball and the Buccaneers recovered. Jeff Garcia connected on a 39-yard pass play to Michael Clayton, to help set up a 23-yard Matt Bryant field goal, the first points of the game. Moments later, Philip Buchanan intercepted Vince Young with 1.29 remaining in the half, to maintain a 3-0 halftime lead. Tennessee took the second half kickoff, and executed a 12-play, 45-yard drive which resulted in a 48-yard field goal by Rob Baronas. On their next possession, Vince Young ran out of bounds, and suffered a strained quad. He would have to leave the game, and was replaced by Kerry Collins. On Tampa Bay's next drive, Garcia connected with Joey Galloway for a 69-yard touchdown catch. On the ensuing drive Ron Barber intercepted a pass by Kerry Collins, but it ruled incomplete after review. With less than four minutes remaining in regulation, Collins drove the Titans to the Buccaneers' 23-yard line. For the second time, Ron Barber intercepted Collins, this time in the end zone, but it was again ruled incomplete after review. The drive continued, and with 1.24 remaining, Lendale White tied the game 10-10 with a touchdown run. With only one timeout, Garcia drove the Buccaneers 55 yards on seven plays. With 11 seconds remaining, Matt Bryant kicked a game-winning 43-yard field goal. This is the only time the Buccaneers have beaten the Titans since they moved from Houston, and one of only two Buccaneer victories against the Oilers-slash-Titans franchise, the other occurring in 1983. At Ford Field, Detroit Tampa Bay racked up 422 yards of offense against Detroit, and quarterback Jeff Garcia passed for 316 yards, but two costly fumbles and one blocked punt allowed the Lions to take the victory. In the first quarter, Tampa Bay and Detroit began what would be a physical game. Tampa Bay suffered injuries to Mark Jones and Michael Clayton, and neither returned. On the sixth play of the game, Detroit forced a fumble for a loss of 23 yards. However, an instant replay ruled the play an incomplete pass instead. Moments later, the Lions blocked a punt by Josh Bidwell, and the turnover led to a field goal. On the next drive, the Buccaneers drove 43 yards to the Lions' 37-yard line, but a fumble between the exchange from Garcia to Ernest Graham was recovered by the Lions. Detroit moved quickly down the field and Kevin Jones scored the first touchdown of the game. Early in the second quarter, Garcia capped off an 81-yard drive with a touchdown pass to Ike Hilliard. Their next possession, a 16-play, 58-yard drive, covered over nine minutes. It came up empty, as Matt Bryant missed a field goal. Detroit moved quickly to score a field goal just before halftime. Late in the third quarter, and early in the fourth quarter, Tampa Bay started another long drive. A 15-play, 73-yard drive of over seven minutes took the Buccaneers to the Detroit one-yard line. Tampa Bay had converted on two third downs, and one fourth down. But Garcia fumbled the handoff on a first and goal at the one-yard line, and Detroit recovered. They drove 93 yards for their second touchdown. Trailing by 16, Tampa Bay drove 78 yards in 16 plays, and Maurice Stovall caught Garcia's second touchdown pass. A two-point conversion failed, but Bryant performed an onside kick, which Tampa Bay recovered. The Buccaneers trimmed the deficit to seven, but a second onside kick failed, and Detroit took the victory. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, 
Florida against the Jaguars Tampa Bay faced in-state rival Jacksonville Jaguars for the fourth time in the regular season. Injured Jacksonville starting quarterback David Garrard was replaced by Quinn Gray, while Jeff Garcia hoped to extend on a 217 consecutive passing streak without an interception. In the first half, Jacksonville's running attack of Fred Taylor, La Brandon Tofield and Maurice Jones drew rushed 15 times in their first 16 plays from scrimmage, and eventually set up a 10-3 lead. In the second quarter, Garcia threw his first interception of the season, which was returned for a Jacksonville score. Tampa Bay quickly responded, however, driving 81 yards in three plays, capped off with Garcia and Joey Galloway connecting for a 58-yard touchdown. A momentum shift appeared to occur near the end of the second quarter, as Tampa Bay forced Jacksonville into a three-and-out. Inside the two-minute warning, Garcia drove the Buccaneers to the four-yard line. Garcia scrambled on third and ten, colliding with Reggie Nelson, losing his helmet, but fell one yard short of the first down. Tampa Bay settled for a Matt Bryant field goal, and a 13-17 halftime deficit. Tampa Bay's defense dominated the third quarter, forcing Jacksonville a turnover on downs, a fumble in the end zone, and a blocked punt. The good field position led to Michael Bennett's first touchdown as a Buccaneer. The fourth quarter saw Jacksonville retake the lead with an eight-yard touchdown pass. Despite two late drives starting with decent field position, Tampa Bay's effort died when Garcia's pass was deflected and intercepted with 19 seconds remaining, his third pick of the game. The loss dropped Tampa Bay to 4-4, second place in the NFC South. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida the Buccaneers beat the visiting Arizona Cardinals, snapping a two-game losing streak, and regained first place in the NFC South. Tampa Bay dominated the game, maintaining a time of possession of over 43 minutes with running back Ernest Graham rushing for 124 yards and one touchdown. Tampa Bay's defense held Arizona to only 23 yards rushing, and held them to two of 10 third-down conversions. An American flag is unfurled on the field before the Bucks cardinals game in the first quarter. Arizona quickly drove down the field, connecting on a 47-yard pass from Kurt Warner to Larry Fitzgerald. The drive stalled, however, and they settled for 43-yard Neil Racker's field goal. Tampa Bay answered on the ensuing drive. On third and first, from the 42-yard line, Jeff Garcia fell, but avoided a sack and scrambled for a first down. Two plays later he scored a 37-yard touchdown pass to Joey Galloway. On the first play of the second quarter, Tenard Jackson intercepted Warner's pass, and Arizona was penalized 15 yards for a face mask, setting up the Buccaneers on the Arizona 27-yard line. Tampa Bay suffered two false start penalties, and settled for a field goal and took a 10-3 lead into halftime. Tampa Bay took the second half kickoff and drove 64 yards in 10 plays. The drive was capped off by a two-yard touchdown run by Ernest Graham. Late in the third quarter, the Buccaneers started a 19-play, 86-yard drive, lasting nearly nine minutes. At the eight-yard line, Garcia threw to Alex Smith but the pass was incomplete in the end zone. The drive came up empty when Matt Bryant missed a 26-yard field goal. Arizona quickly drove down the field and scored a touchdown by Edger and James, narrowing the margin to 17-10. With 2.43 remaining in the game, Tampa Bay punted to Arizona. Maurice Stovall depleted receiver Steve Breston at the Arizona 16-yard line, preventing a return. On the very next play, Jermaine Phillips intercepted Warner's pass, sealing the victory for Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers had their scheduled by the weekend of November 11th. In Week 10 action, Atlanta defeated Carolina, and Street. Louis upset New Orleans, giving Tampa Bay sole possession of first place in the NFC South. At Georgia Dome, Atlanta-Tampa Bay faced their heated division rival for the first time this season, at the Georgia Dome. Tampa Bay dominated, and enjoyed the return of Michael Pittman from injury. Atlanta started quarterback Byron Leftwich. Atlanta suffered four turnovers, and 11 penalties for 105 yards in the loss. In the first quarter, both teams traded punts on their opening drive. On Tampa Bay's second drive, Pittman caught an 11-yard pass but fumbled and it was recovered by Keith Brooking. An instant replay challenge upheld the ruling on the field. On the very next play, Byron Leftwich was hit as he released the ball, and it was intercepted by Barrett Rood, who returned the ball to the 28-yard line. Tampa Bay drove 72 yards in three plays, as Joey Galloway caught a 44-yard touchdown. In the second quarter, Leftwich was sacked from behind and fumbled the ball. Rond Barber picked up the ball, and ran 41 yards for Tampa Bay's second touchdown. 
On Atlanta's next drive, Warwick Dunn fumbled at the 45-yard line. Atlanta challenged the ruling, and the call on the field was overturned and ruled an incomplete pass. The following play, Roddy White fumbled, and Brian Kelly recovered for Tampa Bay. He lateraled to Cato June, who then lost the ball. Despite an instant replay challenge by Tampa Bay, the ruling on the field was upheld. Atlanta, however, was unable to move down the field, and Tampa Bay took a 14-0 lead into halftime. In the third quarter, Tampa Bay added a field goal, then Gaines Adams chopped left which his arm as he threw and his floating pass was intercepted by Chris Hoven. Tampa Bay quickly scored another touchdown catch by Alex Smith. In the fourth quarter, Ernest Graham took over the offense for Tampa Bay, rushing 102 yards total, and a touchdown score. Atlanta avoided the shutout, replacing Leftwich with Joey Harrington, and scored a touchdown with 1-10 to go. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida Tampa Bay hosted Washington for the third time in three seasons during the month of November. Tampa Bay's defense dominated a good part of the game, forcing six turnovers, and despite quarterback Jeff Garcia sitting out most of the game, the Buccaneers held on for a 19-13 victory. On the game's first play, Garcia tried to scramble, but injured his back upon being tackled by Cornelius Griffin. He lasted only two more plays, and was replaced by Bruce Gradkowski until early in the fourth quarter. Garcia's injury seemingly galvanized the Tampa Bay defense, who went on to cause four turnovers in the first half. Philip Buchanan forced a fumble off the Redskins' first pass which was recovered by Tenard Jackson who advanced at eight yards to the Washington 19. Three plays later, Ernest Graham scored a one-yard touchdown run. On the third play of Washington's next drive, Greg White hit Clinton Portis hard, forcing a fumble which Jackson recovered at the 19-yard line. Tampa took a 10-0 lead after a Matt Bryant field goal. Early in the second quarter, Greg White forced yet another fumble as he sacked Jason Campbell which Kevin Carter recovered. The turnover led to another field goal. Portis fumbled again on the following drive as he took a bone-jarring hit from Jermaine Phillips and Tampa Bay capitalized with a third field goal. Before the half, Washington got on the board with a field goal, then Tampa Bay kicked a fourth field goal as the half expired to lead, 19-3. The second half saw Washington attempt a comeback. Despite injuring his hand, Campbell stayed in the game and threw a 39-yard touchdown pass to Chris Cooley. Meanwhile, Gradkowski stayed in at quarterback for Tampa Bay and continued to perform poorly. Tampa Bay managed only 9 yards of offense in the third quarter, and 0 yards passing. The Redskins drove 66 yards in 13 plays and over 9 minutes to the Tampa Bay 4-yard line. Tampa Bay's defense held on 4th and 1st at the 4, however, as linebacker Derek Brooks shed several blockers to down Portis for no gain. Washington narrowed the score to 19-13 in the 4th quarter. With about 11 minutes to go, Jeff Garcia returned to the game, hoping to spark Tampa Bay's offense and hold on for the win. He was unable to do much against the Redskins' well-rested and fired-up defense, however, and Tampa Bay ended up having to punt. Josh Bidwell pinned the Redskins at their own 9-yard line, and Campbell drove them to the Tampa Bay 32-yard line. Ron Barber stopped the threat when he intercepted the ball at the 28-yard line. With less than a minute to go, Campbell drove the Redskins to the Tampa Bay 16-yard line but Brian Kelly intercepted the pass in the end zone with 17 seconds remaining, to clinch the victory for the Buccaneers. At Louisiana Superdome, New Orleans Tampa Bay took on the New Orleans Saints for the second time this season, this time at the Superdome. Luke McCown started a quarterback for the Buccaneers in place of the injured Jeff Garcia. McCown passed for 313 yards, and connected on his first 15 consecutive passes of the game. The Buccaneers scored the first points of the game with Matt Bryant's 27-yard field goal. New Orleans answered with W.R. Terrence Copper catching a four-yard touchdown pass from Drew Brees. Late in the first quarter, McCown connected with W.R. Joey Galloway for a 60-yard catch which set Tampa Bay up on one-yard line. Tampa Bay retook the lead early in the second quarter with Tay Anthony Beck catching a one-yard TD, and Matt Bryant making another field goal to increase the Tampa Bay lead to 13-7. New Orleans scored a touchdown just before halftime, a 45-yard pass to W.R. Devery Henderson, to make it 13-14 at halftime. In the second half, Air Bay Ernest Graham scored a 25-yard touchdown run. New Orleans had to punt on their ensuing possession, but disaster struck with three minutes remaining in the third quarter as miscommunication between McCown and Galloway led to a Saints interception which was returned for a touchdown. 
Leading 21-20 with four minutes remaining in the game, Saints punter Steve Weatherford made a successful coffin corner punt which pinned the Buccaneers at their own two-yard line. Two plays later, Delaware Will Smith sacked McCown for a safety. After the safety kick, New Orleans looked to run the clock out and seal the victory. However, in an unexpected and perhaps season-altering mistake, Reggie Bush fumbled a double reverse intended for W.R. Devery Henderson and Joe Von Hay recovered for Tampa Bay at the New Orleans 37-yard line. Three plays later, the Buccaneers found themselves in a predicament as they faced a fourth down and one at the New Orleans 28. Instead of attempting a game-tying field goal, however, coach John Gruden went for it on fourth down, calling a run-around right tackle which Graham converted for a first down. Three plays later, McCown found Tay Jeremy Stevens for a four-yard touchdown to win the game. With a win, Tampa Bay improved to 8-4 and maintained a perfect division record. Tampa Bay only needed to win one game in the final four weeks to clinch the NFC South division crown. At Reliant Stadium, Houston, Texas Tampa Bay faced the Texans for only the second time in the regular season, and for the first time during the regular season at Reliant Stadium. With a win, or losses by New Orleans and Carolina, Tampa Bay would clinch the NFC South division title. Tampa Bay's postseason berth, however, would have to wait at least another night, as the Texans capitalized on a sluggish Buccaneers squad. For the second week in a row, Luke McCown started in place of injured Jeff Garcia. Meanwhile, backup quarterback Sage Rosenfels led the Texans. Tampa Bay took the opening kickoff, and drove to the Houston 34-yard line. Coach John Gruden elected to go for it on fourth down and two, but running back Ernest Graham was tackled for no gain. Houston took over on downs, and scored a quick and convincing touchdown pass. On the ensuing kickoff, Tampa Bay's Michael Spurlock returned the ball 45 yards to the Houston 47. Even though the drive ended in a punt, the good field position helped pin the Texans deep on their next drive. Greg White sacked Rosenfels and forced a fumble, which was recovered by Jovan Hay the Houston 25. Five plays later, Ernest Graham scored his first rushing touchdown to tie the score 7-7. Later in the second quarter, Ike Hilliard caught a pass for a first down at the Houston 28, but Will Demps hit Hilliard in an apparent helmet-to-helmet and forced a fumble, but did not draw a penalty. Houston recovered, and soon scored a second touchdown to lead 14-7 at halftime. Houston received the second-half kickoff, which Andre Davis returned 97 yards for a touchdown. Just over two minutes later, Tampa Bay responded with a four-play, 69-yard drive, capped off by Graham's second rushing touchdown. Tampa Bay, however, did not score again. Houston added another score early in the fourth quarter, and held on for a 28-14 victory. Tampa Bay fell to 8-5, but still controlled their own destiny for the division championship and overall playoff picture. A single victory in the final three weeks would clinch the NFC South championship. In other Week 14 action, Carolina lost to Jacksonville, eliminating them from the division race, and New Orleans defeated Atlanta, keeping themselves mathematically alive for the division title. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida the Buccaneers stayed home this week for a rematch against their division rivals the Atlanta Falcons. With the convincing victory, Tampa Bay clinched the NFC South division title, maintained a perfect 5-0 division record, and scored their first kickoff return touchdown in franchise history. Tampa Bay's defense recorded the first points of the game, as Ron Barber intercepted Chris Redmond's pass on the third play of the game and returned at 29 yards for a touchdown. Atlanta got on the board next with kicker Morton Anderson making a 33-yard field goal. On the ensuing kickoff, Michael Spurlock made team history by becoming the first Buccaneer player to return a kickoff for a touchdown. It was the first kickoff return touchdown for Tampa Bay in 32 seasons, 498 games, and 1,865 attempts. After the Buccaneer defense forced a Falcons punt, Jeff Garcia commandeered a long, clock-eating 10-minute drive ending in a 33-yard field goal by Matt Bryant to make the score 17-3. With just over five minutes remaining in the first half, Tampa Bay recovered an Atlanta fumble, and Ernest Graham scored a one-yard TD run. Graham became the first player in club history to score a touchdown in six consecutive games. With a 24-3 lead, Tampa Bay performed a pooch kickoff, and Atlanta muffed the return, while Calvin Pearson recovered. Tampa Bay drove to the 24-yard line, but D'Angelo Hall intercepted a pass intended for Joey Galloway at the Atlanta 11-yard line. The Buccaneers would immediately regain possession as Greg White forced and recovered a fumble on the next play. 
Matt Bryant then easily converted a 28-yard field goal to take a 27-3 lead into halftime. Tampa Bay would receive the second half's opening kickoff, but was forced to punt after a seven-minute drive. On Atlanta's third play, Jermaine Phillips intercepted a pass intended for Jarius Norwood which set Tampa Bay up at the Atlanta 23-yard line. Matt Bryant then scored the half's first points with a 34-yard field goal to make the score 30-3. In the fourth quarter, Hunter Josh Bidwell successfully pinned Atlanta at their own six-yard line. The resulting poor field position eventually led to Tampa Bay taking over near midfield. Michael Bennett carried six times all the way to the Atlanta one-yard line, from which Anthony Beck scored the game's final points off a one-yard TD catch. Statistically, Tampa Bay's defense dominated Atlanta. The Falcons managed only 133 yards of total offense, committed five turnovers, and were 0 for 9 on third down conversions. The Falcons crossed midfield only once, and Tampa Bay's time of possession was 43 minutes. On the following Wednesday, the kickoff return touchdown earned Spurlock the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week award. At Bill Walsh Field at Monster Park, San Francisco Tampa Bay traveled west to San Francisco for the third time in five seasons. Tampa Bay lost their eighth consecutive meeting at Monster Park, dating to 1980. This game was originally scheduled for 8.15 p.m. on NBC Sunday Night Football, but on December 10, in accordance with flex scheduling, the game was moved to the afternoon. Having already clinched a playoff berth, Tampa Bay rested most of their starters in the second half. Despite a late rally, the Buccaneers fell two points short of victory. Tampa Bay controlled most of the first half, capping off their first two drives of the first quarter with field goals by Matt Bryan. On the first play of the second quarter, Sean Hill connected with Daryl Jackson on a 21-yard touchdown. San Francisco punted on their next drive, and Michael Spurlock fielded the ball at the 19-yard line. He was tackled and fumbled, while the 49ers recovered. After an instant replay challenge, it was determined that Spurlock was down by contact, and Tampa Bay maintained possession. The drive fizzled though, and ended with a punt. Late in the fourth quarter, Barrett Rood recovered a 49ers fumble, setting the Buccaneers up on the San Francisco 36-yard line. Four plays later, Jeremy Stevens caught a touchdown pass from Jeff Garcia. Tampa Bay took a 13-7 lead into halftime. On the second half kickoff, San Francisco recovered a surprise onside kick. The drive came up empty, as they were forced to punt. On Tampa Bay's next possession, however, Luke McCown fumbled and the 49ers recovered at the 14-yard line. In four plays, San Francisco scored a touchdown. Early in the fourth quarter, Nate Clements intercepted a McCown pass, and led to another 49ers touchdown. The 49ers led 21-13, but Tampa Bay still kept hopes alive for a rally. With less than six minutes left in the game, the Buccaneers drove to the 49ers' 25-yard line. On fourth down and six, McCown threw to Michael Clayton for an apparent one-handed touchdown catch, but the ball fell incomplete, and the drive turned over on downs. Tampa Bay managed one final chance to tie the score. Inside the two-minute warning, Tampa Bay drove to the 49ers' 24-yard line. McCown rolled out wide to his right, and connected with Stevens for a 24-yard touchdown. McCown then attempted a game-tying two-point conversion. Michael Clayton caught the pass, but one of his feet touched out of bounds in the back of the end zone, sealing the game for San Francisco. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida Tampa Bay concluded the regular season at home against the Panthers. They dropped the season finale, and their second straight game, but rested most of their starters. Luke McCown started at quarterback. On their opening drive, McCown drove the Buccaneers for the game's first score, a touchdown pass to Jeremy Stevens. The drive included a 52-yard catch by Chad Lucas. Carolina responded by driving to the Tampa Bay four-yard line. A field goal kick was good, but a holding penalty by Derek Brooks gave the Panthers a first down. They capitalized by scoring a touchdown. In the second quarter, an interception by Philip Buchanan led to a Tampa Bay field goal. Late in the second quarter, Josh Bidwell punted to Carolina, but a fumble on the return was recovered by the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay tacked on another field goal before halftime, and trailed, 14-13, at the half. Midway through the third quarter, Carolina punted and pinned the Buccaneers on their own two-yard line. McCown then led the Buccaneers on a 10-play, 98-yard touchdown drive, the longest such scoring drive in franchise history. Carolina kept themselves in the game, however, quickly following up with a 46-yard reception to Drew Carter, and then a one-yard touchdown run. Trailing 31-23 late in the fourth quarter, 
McCown drove the Buccaneers to the Carolina 36-yard line, but was intercepted by Richard Marshall. The Buccaneers finished the regular season 9-7. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida. Thanks for watching.